Hey, it's Professor Fay with your anatomy lesson of the day. Here we have a mini model that we're going to use to talk through the different organs and structures of the digestive system. So if we start here, food of course enters the mouth through the process of ingestion and it passes into our oral cavity. At the base of our oral cavity is the tongue and at the superior aspect of it is the hard palate, which is the roof of your mouth and soft palate with a little uvula uh, at the tip of the soft palate. Food would pass into the oropharynx, down through the laryngopharynx, and finally into the esophagus, which sits just posterior to the trachea. So here's the trachea coming down, and then just posterior to it, you can see the esophagus there in the thoracic cavity. That passes through a little hole in the diaphragm called the hiatus, and it's going to connect to the stomach, which is right here. Uh, so food would pass through the stomach and into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. You don't see that so well here. Uh, but then as food enters that duodenum, some secretions from the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas, which is posterior to all of this, would enter the duodenum to help with enzymatic digestive um, activity. The middle portion of the small intestine is the jejunum, and the end portion of the small intestine is the ileum. The ileocecal sphincter is right about here, where the ileum meets up with the cecum of the large intestine. So then uh, food would travel through the ascending colon, uh, take a turn here at the hepatic flexure, also called the right colic flexure. It would travel across the transverse colon, take a turn here at the splenic flexure or left colic flexure, down the descending colon and into the sigmoid colon, rectum, and anus before it gets to the toilet. So then if we take a few structures of this model out, First, you can see the liver. So here's the, the big right lobe of the liver and the left lobe of the liver. They're separated by this structure called the falciform ligament that anchors the abdominal wall, uh, helps hold the liver in place. Then just uh, inferior to the right lobe here is the gallbladder and the cystic duct, which connects it to the common bile duct. Again, that common bile duct goes down into the duodenum and brings some bile down there. Then if we take out the stomach, the stomach has a few regions to talk about. Uh, so first, as food passes down the esophagus, it enters the stomach through the lower esophageal sphincter. It passes into this cardia region, this kind of entryway. It would get funneled over to the, the fundus, and then it would pass through the body of the stomach and into the pyloric region, where the pyloric sphincter would meet up with the duodenum. If we look into the abdominal cavity here, you can see right where the, uh, the duodenum is. That goes retroperitoneal, meaning it dives behind the peritoneum, which is the serous membrane of the abdominal cavity. And then it kind of reemerges as the jejunum, which is the middle portion of the small intestine, and that is within the peritoneum. The last part of the small intestine is that ileum, and again, you can see that ileocecal sphincter. Now on the large intestine, there's a few features of it to note. This white band that you can see is called the tenia coli. It's a longitudinal band of muscle that helps um, form these hostra, these little pouches. So each individual thing you see here, these are hostra. Uh, then you can see a few little yellowish things hanging off of the tenia coli there, off of the hostra. Those are called epiploic appendages. They're little fatty sort of tassels that um, are found on the large intestine. If I take out the intestines and turn them so that you can see the posterior side, this white would be the mesentery. It's a portion of the peritoneum that anchors the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. Uh, and the mesocolon also anchors the large intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. You can also see the pancreas pretty nicely. That would actually sit just posterior to the, uh, to the stomach. And then finally, for the large intestine, you can see how it ends as the sigmoid colon, this sort of S shape and then it would um, transition into the rectum and eventually the anus. So those are your digestive structures and organs for today.